GitHub Actions gets an official VS Code extension, it's developer conference season, a beautiful history of Visual Basic, and a pick of the week that bricks 2001's most underrated gaming console in a good way. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, my shirt this week is from Scale, the Southern California Linux Expo, which took place a couple weeks back. I had planned to wear a different shirt this week, but it didn't arrive in time. If you're a fan of my shirts from companies that imploded in spectacular ways, Stay tuned for future episodes. In any event, Scale was fantastic this year, and I want to give a shout out to that entire community, especially for having women's size small shirts, because we don't see that all the time. All right, before we get into the news, I do want to note that this is the 40th episode of The Download, and this week also marks my first year as an official GitHub employee. So whether you've been watching the show since we started it back in, on the Microsoft Developer YouTube channel, and you followed me over here, or if you're new to the show, I want to thank you for watching and for all of your comments, questions, and feedback. I couldn't do this without you, and I want to give a shout out to the people that helped me put this thing together, Araya, The Mats, Justin, Ryan, and the whole crew at DevRel Studios. You guys are the best. Now let's get into the news. Just a reminder, GitHub announced a ton of stuff about GitHub Copilot X last week, and if you want to catch up on that, I've got a link for it down below. This week, GitHub Galaxy, our event for enterprise developers and their bosses took place. If you were not able to attend, we'll have sessions going up on our YouTube page in the coming weeks, but you can check out a great post from Inbal, our chief product officer, that outlines how GitHub sees the new developer experience taking shape. And be sure to check out the GitHub Galaxy keynote, which features our CEO, Thomas Domke, as well as Inbal and our other product leaders and friends as they spoke about helping your teams be more productive to fix today's problems clear yesterday's backlogs and build for tomorrow. Really good stuff. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is GitHub Actions has an official VS Code extension. Yes, this is fantastic news. So GitHub Actions, which is our CI CD tool for being able to push your builds out, um, there's been a Visual Studio Code extension from the community that has existed for a long time, but add things like syntax highlighting and, and helping you do some, uh, you know, uh, basically get started with the extension. But what's great is that that extension has now been officially adopted by GitHub. And, and Christopher writes a blog post, which I've got linked down below, explaining a little bit about how it works and how this is now an officially GitHub supported project. And one of the great things you can do with the extension, in addition to having the syntax, like I said, there are now some great tool tips in that kind of give you information about what different parts of the GitHub action do. And you can actually open up um, you know, a, a Git repo and you can pull in what extensions are available and you can actually see uh, the logs of what's run, you can rerun things, you can do a lot of debugging. So if you're someone who spends a lot of time with GitHub Actions, but you've sort of struggled with how to either do debugging or you want to get you know, um, a better look at, at how you can uh, write um, actions, this is a really great extension. So I've got a link to the blog post um, uh, in the show notes in the uh, description down below, as well as the extension on the VS Code Marketplace. Really love seeing this go from something that one of our developers did in their spare time to now something that is officially adopted by GitHub. Really great stuff. Speaking of really great stuff, developer conference and hackathon season is just getting started. It is spring after all, it's that time of year, and in the next two months, the major tech companies are all having their big annual developer events. On May 10th, Google will be holding Google I.O. with a limited live audience for everyone online. Then on May 23rd through the 25th, Microsoft Build will be taking place. Um, it'll be available to everyone online, but we're also back and in person at the Seattle Convention Center, so that's really exciting. I will be at Build, so if you see me, say hello. And then Apple announced this week that WWDC will be taking place June 5th through the 9th, primarily online, but like Google I.O., there will be a limited live audience to watch the keynote and the State of the Union at Apple Park. I cannot wait for all the new tools and frameworks and features that we're gonna see from all these companies and all these platforms, so you know, stay tuned for more. Now, if you're more in the mood to build things right now, the gamedev.js jam is happening soon. 
GameDev.js Jam celebrates web games, so you're basically building an HTML5 game within 13 days of the jam on a given theme, which is revealed at the start, and this time it runs between April 13th and the 26th, and there are prizes. And like last year, GitHub is sponsoring the Open Source Challenge, and we can't wait to see what you build. I've got a link to the Game Jam in the links down below. As I said, it's gonna kick off in just two weeks, and then you're gonna have 13 days to build. We'll be announcing uh, what the theme is when it kicks off, so stay tuned. Moving on to some other updates. The March 2023 release of Visual Studio Code is now available, and this release brings some new accessibility improvements. So there are new keyboard shortcuts for hovers, notifications, and sticky scroll. Uh, there's also the ability to copy GitHub deep links, and there's an option to automatically format notebooks on save. There are also some updates to the remote tunnels experience and new Ruby language uh, support, and there's even a preview of the expanded GitHub Copilot integration that'll be coming alongside um, GitHub Copilot chat in the future. So I've got links to the VS Code release notes and the GitHub repo in the show notes down below. All right, this next bit of news I actually saw a couple weeks back, but I didn't have a chance to mention it. But for 90s kids like me who learned to code using Visual Basic, or really anyone, um, uh, Retool's Ryan Lucas wrote a beautiful and expansive history of Visual Basic over on the Retool website. And this is the thesis statement how Visual Basic became the world's most dominant programming environment, its sudden fall from grace, and why its influence is still shaping the future of software development. I cannot stress enough how great this article was. Ryan talked to many of the OG Visual Basic developers and creators, and the story and its unlikely successes is just really wonderful. But beyond being a great piece of writing, and it is, this is one of the most beautiful web pages I've seen, with every little detail and every pixel on the fonts completely emblematic of that era. As somebody who, as I said, I learned Visual Basic 5 in middle school, I love this so much, but I think this will resonate with anybody who was programming in that era. And now it's time for my Project Spotlight, where I spotlight a GitHub project from the community. So one of the things we love in the JavaScript world are frameworks. We love frameworks so much that our frameworks have frameworks, and these are called meta frameworks. They're frameworks that are built on top of other frameworks, and they're not really frameworks themselves, but they, you know, they're a way to make it easier to build applications and websites using other frameworks. And if you took a drink every time I said frameworks, you would not be thirsty at all. Framework? React has a couple of meta frameworks, including Next.js and Gatsby. Vue has Nuxt and Vuepress. Spelt has SpeltKit. But what about Angular? Look, I know Angular gets slept on, but it's still an incredibly popular JavaScript framework, and that's why I love Analog, a meta framework for building Angular applications and websites. It's powered by Vite, it has hybrid SSR and SSG support, and it even has Astro integration, which is really rad. It's led by Brandon Roberts and a bunch of other contributors, and I really, really love this. I've got a link to the GitHub repo and the project page down below. Keep up the great work. And now it's time for my pick of the week. YouTuber Peter Netter rebuilt the exterior of 2001's most underrated console, yes, I'm talking about the Nintendo GameCube, entirely in Lego bricks. So as I said, he bricked a console in a good way. Uh, he even attempted to build a GameCube controller out of bricks. And that was less successful, but this video is still really great. Uh, I ran across this bit of wizardry via my pal, Andrew Lazuski over at Gizmodo, but this video, as I said, is just so much fun. And it reminds me that my GameCube is in near perfect condition in my parents' basement, and I really need to rescue it. Uh, my Nintendo 64, my Dreamcast, and a bunch of other consoles of my childhood are there too, so I need to do that next time I go home. What are the coolest LEGO recreations that you've seen? Let me know in the comments down below, or let me know your thoughts on any other story we discussed this week. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you again for watching us for the last 40 episodes. If you liked this, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.